Hello, I'm David Hunt. My guest today is a person I've known for quite a few years now. I call him a dear friend, Michael Dalton. Hello, Michael. Hello, David. Michael was in Oliver on the East End. West End. West End, sorry. At the age of 10. Yes. You moved to Australia when you were 12. Yep. You went to Ringwood High. Then you, you know, and we'll get to this a little bit later, the phones which is a cappella group mm -hmm. that were very, very well known in, in their day. Rocky Horror Show, can't wait to talk to years you about Rocker. I know, years, years of it. Julian Clary, you travelled the world with him, mm -hmm. incredible. Dolly Diamond's manager and father of Olive. Yes. Wow. Let's go back to the beginning. Oliver, how, how come? Well, I was in a choir and the guy that was running that um, said to my mum and dad I should audition and uh, so I did and I don't really remember much of you know I, I think I remember sort of auditioning and then but I remember getting you know they rang up my mum and said oh we'd like to offer Michael Oliver all oh, right okay now which which what's what's he going to be and they said oh no and couldn't believe it you know that is a huge rock I was only 10 years of age and so I hadn't auditioned for much well, anything other than the choir you know yeah um and to get something like that I think was amazing it was a really good choir mm. um to begin with and I, but I think you're born with, you know, a voice and depends what you do with it. My brother was a better singer than I was. Yeah. Um, but just didn't pursue it. You yeah. Know? So moving to, to uh, Australia at the age of 12, 10 year on stage in Oliver, the, the leading role. Yep. Um, and were you pissed off with your parents that they were moving away from London? No, I, we'd, we'd gone on holiday to visit my eldest brother and sister who'd moved over and I loved it. I loved okay. the sun and... You know, it, it for me it felt like America because I'd never been to America. Yeah. And I was imagined that's what it was like, cause, yep. you know, great big highways and uh, hamburger stores and yep. all of that. You yep. know, and I loved it. And you know, I don't know. I but you know, I'd only done one musical and I wasn't really auditioning for anything else. Yep. Um, so it was right. Or at the right time. Yeah. Of, co of course, it would have been. But you know, it's a kid. You. I know, you but I mean, yeah. Yeah, and I, I wonder what it would have happened. You know, because. Yep. With your, when you're into that business, you know, would have, mm. you know, would, it, would I have gone to something else? Could I have done The Sound of Music or whatever? God mm. knows. But you're that young. Marina, what was it like, you know, like going to high school here uh, in Melbourne, Ringwood? I was very different, what funny you enough. Well, I was the only British kid. Actually, I wasn't my brother, who is three years older than me, still yep. to this very day, actually. He was there, but he got rid of his accent in about 20 minutes. Okay. Because he didn't want to stand oh. out. So he was oh, <laughs> yeah. going to try and do an Australian accent, which I've normally got. But I was all right with it. I didn't want to be, you know, so I didn't you want to blend. So you wanted to stand out in the crowd. <laughs> yes, of, yes, which I you, loved it. Which always wanted to. Yeah. So I had a buzz cut. Yeah. And I didn't get the school uniform, which was just grey. I was wearing my own like Fred Perry and you know Winkle Picker shoes. And Didn't you get into trouble? No, because in the beginning you don't. You know we were arrived in the middle of the year. Oh, okay. You know, so you have to get that right. in. You know. Okay. And uh, I remember being like Eliza Doolittle. You know, like more British than I've ever. You know, ah, they hit me in the lug hole. You know, <laughs> like more more than I've ever sounded. But uh, I like to make them laugh. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah of course. Know. Were you out by that stage? No, definitely not. And, well, uh, did you know you were gay? I, I re yes, I, I reckon. Uh, I don't ever think I was in. You know, I, th I think I've been out most of my life. Yep. But or flamboyant or camp. You know, um, but there is a big difference, as we know, because yeah. a lot of straight men can be flamboyant and camp. Absolutely. You know. Yep. Uh, but I did have, you know, a uh, you know, sexual awakening, as it were, when I was in England, you know, so probably... Before you uh, came out, mm -hmm, right. Probably 11 or, you know, just before we moved over. Yeah. But then it wasn't until much later that, you know, I actually came out. Right. As a, a teenager, um, you know, like in the outer suburbs, um, eastern suburbs Ringwood, of Melbourne, yeah. you know, like, where did it, you know, like, you are always, you know, like, flamboyant and... Yeah, like, did you know back then that you were going to be a performer? All my life I wanted to be, and there was never any other option. Yeah, I mean, my family was in sales. My dad had sold, you know, and ran, you know, big stores, you know, as And he was really manager. good at it, wasn't he? Very good at it, yep. you know, but would sell anything. And then my brothers did as well, and my mm. sister did. 
Um, and but they're if, you know they're out there with it. It's not you know you know boring salesmen. You know yeah. big yeah. show people, big loud family. Yep. And uh, yeah, there was no, never any option. So I was singing all my life, and uh, even at school, it was I was lucky, really lucky, to get to Ringwood High School because it was a great school. Yeah. And the, the musicals they did there were amazing. My music and singing teacher Judith Curphy began the Australian Girls Choir. Um, and you were and part of. Yeah, yeah, I was briefly, <clears throat> I dressed up for it. Excuse me, something in my throat. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just, I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I did the musicals, The Lion and The Wizard of Oz and yeah. things like that, and I loved it. But I was auditioning for stuff as well. You know, I did extra work on Neighbours and, you know, Flying Doctors and stuff, oh, you know, fantastic. while I was at school. So, so therefore you then, um, decided that singing was what you were going to do. How, Always how was. I wanted to be a pop singer. Right, okay. I wanted to be as famous as George Michael and Madonna. I've seen some of footage of you. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that's what I was, a singer, yep. um, predominantly. And you were on some you know. of the, um, you know, like the competition shows. Yeah, I did Hot Luck and I did New... Oh, I can't think now. It's terrible. Um, but I, and I used to sing with um, Lulu, super girly. Yep. Because you went to school with her. We went to school together. We were in a duo group called Just Two. And because uh, there was just two of us. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, my mother came up with a name. <laughs> took her hours. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we were good. You know, yeah. we were what we were. But yeah. we were good. We yeah. were fun and yeah. uh, loud, I would imagine. Yeah. So when, when did the phones come along? I left school and then did a year at Box Hill Drama College mm -hmm. and then uh, did that and then went to Rusden because uh, they did the first couple of years was drama and then you do the teaching side of it, which I, I thought, well, I'll, you know, <laughs> see what happens, you know. I got in, that was the main thing. I'd auditioned for something and got it. And uh, I did one year and then after that I joined the phones. It was right. just an audition and you go along, they're replacing a lot of the old members. There was just the one original guy, Reg. Right. And a cappella? Yeah, we basically were on Hey Hey It's Saturday a lot and we're on the Burt Newton show once a week. And it was good to be on TV and to go and do live gigs. And and so you know. that was your full-time job then? Yeah. <coughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I moved out of Ringwood and moved into St Kilda. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was great. Loved it. Mm. Definitely out, definitely enjoying life. Yeah. And, you know, it was earning money. And so what happened? You decided to go back to England? I did a few years with them, the phones, and then did Rocky Horror in uh, Melbourne. Right. Oh, that was in Melbourne? <clears throat> yes. And all, so you the auditioned? The star one, yeah, right. which was, you know, you knew you were auditioning uh, most likely for one of the six phantom roles, the chorus. Yeah. Because it's a very small chorus. Yes. But... Um, Gina Riley and Red and Wilbur and that, that, Peter Rose Thorne, they were all in that one. Yep. And How yeah. long did you do that? I think it was all the Melbourne and Adelaide season I did. And then I left after that. Right, to go to, back to, to England. To London, yeah. I'd, well, I'd met Julian Clary in Melbourne. And uh, he basically asked me to be his backing singer in Australia. So I think I did the first one in Brisbane. Right. And that went really well. And then somewhere else can't remember but he moved back to london and then asked if i wanted to come over there and do shows over there whoa which was amazing and i i knew i always wanted to go back yeah and uh, this was just a great opportunity to do that yeah how long were you with julian well on and off for quite a few years yeah because uh, we did his uk tours and uh in london and yeah and then we went back to Australia, which was amazing to come back. Yeah. And, you know, back to Melbourne and to work there and people come and see you, you know. Uh, he, he, you know, I, you know Julian well enough from TV and things like that. Very honest. I didn't like you when I first met you, you know. I was like, all right, you know. <laughs> it's got to let you know, though. I'm, I'm all right with that, really. Uh, I thought you were very pushy. I thought, well, yes. Yeah. yeah. Tell me something. <laughs> how you know. get on in yeah. life? <laughs> yeah. How I've got on in life? Yeah. So what happened, Michael? Um, yeah, like Julian decided to stop touring a bit. So that, no, or he, did you? He, he did is he kick still you going. Out? He's still going. But he had a big break though, didn't he? Well, he had a bit of a forced exile. Right. Because we were in London and at the British Comedy Awards, 
and he said, I feel a fisting joke coming on. And I said, do be careful. <coughs> Ooh. And so then he presented a reward and said, I've just been in the wings fisting Norman Lamont, <laughs> who was the ex-Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> and so and, therefore... Uh, so we, let, we were, went out for you get dinner afterwards after the awards and we were there and it was a real sort of weird atmosphere everywhere. And then as we left, I've never had that many, you know, flash bulbs go off. Um, and obviously not at me, but I, you know, was there, you yeah. know, that far away. And then it was the front page of every newspaper. Shocking, you know, outrageous. You know, nowadays that would be nothing. Mm. But then it was a lot. Anyway, so the um, and you can't touring. You can't do that all the time. Anyway, can you? And so I then auditioned for Rocky Horror over there and did it over there and ended up doing it in the West End and then well, across Europe for years. And wow. I, and I, like I'm, once I'm in a job and it's going well and you know, and you think you're getting the money and you haven't got audition and you're loving what you're doing, yep. I just kept re-signing, you yep. know, and more yep. of Europe. But did you get sick of playing the, you know, the same roles or did you play well, it a little bit different every night because you could at that sort of show? Yes, th which is why um, I don't know how brilliant I'd be in a, in Les Mis, where if you do if you do it slightly different, it's all written up. Mm. You know they don't like it at all. You know, yep, whereas yep. but I mean I wasn't that different. But it was fun. We were in, you know, Amsterdam and you know Zurich and places like that. And the, you'd do the show, and that was amazing. But the extracurricular stuff all around that. Mm. You know, I was doing a lot of everything. Yeah, you know? and and the fact is that you were part of something yeah. that was you know like folklore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rocky Horror it goes is and it goes off. Yes, you know, as we all know, Rocky yeah. Horror is one of those. Yeah. And in Europe, being in Amsterdam for the Gay Games and playing Rocky, you know. Back when I so you know, were you? Uh, who were you? I was Rocky. Yeah. Rocky, I've seen photos. Yeah, and had a you know slim waist, <laughs> and uh, oh god, it was a nightmare though. You know, because having to maintain that. Yet you know, at the end of the night, you go back to where you're staying. F next thing, first thing in the morning, you're on the tour bus. Yeah. And then you arrive after hours of you know it could be two hour journey or it could be an eight you know it could be mm. a ridiculous one and then you get there and I have to go to the gym yeah and you walk into reception and they don't speak a lot of English and I'm very impatient so I'd walk up and go fitness fitness <laughs> and my friends who I still know now take the piss out of me for my ugly behaviour <laughs> and then you get to your room and it's a horrible single bed and mm. I want a double bed yeah, yeah. but I, I just you know mm. I'm. I'm better than that now. Right, so I've you, grown up. You, you, you left. I still like a double better. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Uh, you left Rocky Horror, and yes. how did the meeting of Dolly come about? I was uh, working on the cabaret scene in London as as myself. You know, so you'd, as a male vocalist, you come out and do 30, 45 minutes. Yep. And, uh, you know, moving on up and all that sort of stuff. And then um, I was with this woman in London who said, um, I've got this drag gig for, oh, you don't do drag. I said, what is it? I want to do it. Because everyone has said you should do drag. You get more money and, you know, the theatrical nature of me, you know. And uh, so I thought stuff that I'm doing it, where is it? It was in Wales, in Cardiff. And... Uh, so I went down to the local shops and bought myself a pair of heels about that high off the ground, <laughs> £9.99, and then went off to Cardiff and did this gig. And it just went really well, you know. And I loved it, and I think I was, that was into it almost immediately. Yeah. And that was it. You, you do one, and then they ring back and say, oh, we'll have Dolly again. She, you know, we loved it. And yep. then I think, well, where's the others? And, you know, and that was probably 17 years ago. Yeah. And the, re the rest is history. And the wonderful thing about Dolly is that Dolly is, you know, like um, a, a business. Yeah. But you have also been very generous over the years in, in you know, like emceeing events or singing at events for fundraising and in our community. Well, I, I, I reckon that's what you should do in, in a business as well, you know. If you want to get your name out there in the beginning, you I, I was just brought up, you say yes to everything, you know, and then do it all, you know. Um, but no, I want Do Dolly to be, you know, Dolly's an ambassador for Guide Dogs Victoria and I do Movember and, you know, 
the children's tumor foundation you know all, all of them really anything i can do mm. um but you know it's oh, you've got, got to have a bit of a business sense about it you know the more you're out there the more people are familiar with you and then yeah. you know off that you hope you get other work as well mm. um but no i like to do i like i do like to give back because mm. it bloody well makes you feel good doesn't yeah. it and, and following on from your fa in your father's footsteps, you're a, a quite a good business person with it, considering that a lot of um, artists are hopeless on the business front. But yeah. because of your dad, it's yes. taught you to be, I've, Without I've a got doubt. to control it. Without a doubt. And I, I reckon that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I was blessed with amazing mum and dad, you mm. know, and I'm grateful to them for that. But my dad especially had that, you know, mm. if you're going to treat, treat it like it's a business mm. and, you know, it'll work. And as you said, guide dogs, uh, and um, uh, but also you're doing a lot of stuff overseas now. You know, like you've just been to Edinburgh a Festival, yep. and and uh, there's another festival that you did in London. What was that called? Underbelly. Underbelly. Yeah, they're both uh, connected to Underbelly. Right. Um, and just you know to be able to go over there and do that sort of. And you were in Canada. Know, yeah. 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 I mean, I want more. Dave. You want, I want more, more of it. You know, d who doesn't, you know? Yeah. Um, but you're now getting a name, though, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes. You know. and, and people are wanting you um, in other places of the world. Yeah, I mean, very slowly. But, you know, I, for me, I would, I'd like to work in, in more in London and, and everywhere else. Um, but I'm not exactly a household name in Australia either. You yep. know, I'm not on TV, you know, on any regular, you know, mm. show or but anything. But in Melbourne you are, though. Yes, but you know what I mean? I would like my own, you know. Yep. I'm coming for this show. <laughs> no, I'd like my own. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, you you just got to keep going, haven't you? Yeah. You know? What's the one thing with Dolly that you like the most? You know, like, if you, you could stand and watch Dolly, what... What is it about I like to Dolly? make people laugh. Oh, do you mean about Dolly as hell? Yeah. No, well, that's... Well, that's it. Yeah. That is it for me. That you uh, know. I love Dolly's amazing quick wit. Yes, and I over the years, you know, in the beginning, I, I think I would go, I would be try to be funny, and then I'd go for the jugular, you know, and then, whereas you haven't got to do that, mm. you know, and I realised that I'm not really like that, mm. you know. There are other ways. As long as you can, as long as I can get a laugh, I'd rather do it in a nice way. Yep. I never look into an audience and go for an easy victim yep. either. You know, yep. it's really, yeah. you know, it's more fun. You know, the people that, you know, if I can see them really like that, then I'll probably leave them alone as well. Yep. You know, absolutely. Um, but and I don't mind people squirming. I like mm, that. You mm. know, and also there's the ones that you know, sit there like, pick me, <laughs> pick me. <laughs> so, uh, but but, but um, it's an art that um, that Dolly and you have is that you're as I said you know like how quick you are and you pick up on something and and you know like that's just an art in itself isn't it you know, like it you, is yeah that's not something you've trained yourself it's just who no, you are I, I believe the more you do it the probably better at it you are but yep. there's um, yeah I, d I definitely well you know when we've all got something haven't we you know. Mm. Um, but no, I, I love that side of it. And hosting is something that Dolly would like to do more of? Yeah, oh, I mean, I, I reckon I'm doing enough as it is. But yes, oh, oh, of course, more, you know. I, I like it. You know, I like the interaction with people yep. and, you know, same as you, you know. But the corporate world is, is um, you know, like... And, it's and great, isn't it, the corporate world? But yeah. it's not as fun no. as... You as know, in, you know, reducing a, your own or... Or a cabaret a, yeah, festival you know, or... Yeah, oh. yeah. They're the best. Doing Adelaide Cabaret Festival, uh, Melbourne Cabaret. You know, I love them, you know. Just tell us about um, Adelaide Cabaret Festival uh, quickly. Um, you, you did it this year. What was the show you did? It was my, it's a show which is my loving tribute to Dolly Parton. Right. Parton Me. Parton Me, yes. great name. And uh, it's all Dolly's songs, but my stories, yep. you know. Yep, yep. Um, and, and you and did I'm it not, with a choir? Yeah, I did it with a gospel choir. Chorus, yeah, the gospel choir, right. the um, gospel collective, they're right. called, and they're in Adelaide. Yeah. Oh, they're just incredible. Fantastic. And yeah. who was the artistic director of um, the Cabaret Festival? Julia Zemiro. Right. Yeah. And she's a bit of a mate of yours yes, as well, isn't absolutely she? Absolutely lovely lady, yeah. you know. Um, Brilliant. And, you, you know, just so supportive, you know. Mm. You know it's, I, I, you know, I've worked really hard to get where I am. Yep. But there's a lot of people around me that have been absolutely lovely yep. and helped me along the yep. way. Well, you're that sort of person. And I feel grateful for that, yeah, you know, more than absolutely. anything, you know.
Can't wait to see the next stage. Ready. Um, Michael Dalton, thank you so much. Thank you, David. I'm David Hunt. I'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.